Hello everyone, I am Poojita from Talent Battle. Welcome to a new video. In this video, we are going to check TCS advanced reasoning questions. As we know, TCS is planning to hire 2023 batch students for both ninja and digital role. This video will help you to understand the advanced reasoning section for TCS integrated test pattern. TCS has recently introduced the advanced reasoning section. This video is going to help you to understand the level of questions that might come in advanced reasoning. There might be some of the questions upon complex data arrangements or Venn diagrams or upon visual reasoning, etc. So this video is going to give you a brief idea about the advanced reasoning questions. You can also join our live TCS integrated test pattern preparation which will be covering all the previous year questions for foundation sections of numerical, verbal, and logical, and advanced sections of quants, reasoning, and coding. You can also join our social media platforms like Telegram group, Instagram page, and WhatsApp group. We constantly give update upon placement preparations and off-campus placements on our pages. Links for all of them are in the description box. Before we start, do not forget to subscribe our YouTube channel and press the bell icon for instant notifications about our videos. We will start. So here is a question from the concept of data arrangement. So let's see how to solve. Read the following information carefully and answer the question. In Bangalore University, there are nine students, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, G H, and I, who live in a hostel has nine story building. They live on different floors. Lowermost floor of the building is numbered one. One above that is numbered two and the topmost is numbered as nine. They all have different branded mobile phones, Nokia, Samsung, Gioni, Oppo, Vivo, Sony, Lenovo, Motorola and Apple. So there are, so they gave the information about the people and the floor they live and the brand of mobile they are going to use. So before going to solve such a complex question from data arrangement, what I'll do, I will first place the position. So it will be easy for me to solve the question. I'll place like this, the first floor, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. Now the person living in this particular floor, we need to identify, and maybe the phone they are using also, we need to arrange it. So the information is given about them. So let's try to do the arrangement. There are five floors between G and the one who is using Motorola. So it is not a direct hint. Means just by seeing this sentence, there are five floors between G and Motorola. Means so many uh, ways are possible. For suppose G can be here and after five floors, one, two, three, four, five, Motorola can come here. Or else G can be here and Motorola can come here. G can be here, Motorola can come here. It might be even reverse also. So that kind of uh, hints are called indirect hints. Means you cannot place the position of them exactly just by seeing the particular sentence. So I will always try to start with a direct hint. We had that and then what they said, let's read out first the information. D does not leave on the top floor. So on the top floor, D should not come. This is one hint they gave. The one who has Nokia lives immediately below the one who has Lenovo. So whoever is having Lenovo, the one who is using Nokia lives immediately next to him. Okay, this is one more hint, but we cannot place it exactly. The one who has Lenovo lives on the even number of floors. So the one who is using Lenovo is going to live on the even number of floors. So it is an even number of floors. Means it can be eight, six, four, two. So we cannot exactly place it out. Any of this is possible. And next, the one who has journey lives on odd number of floor, but below six. The one who is using journey is living on the odd number of floor below six. Means five, three, and one are possible for him. Odd number of floors below six. But still, I cannot place him out directly. These all are the possibilities for him. And next. B lives on the sixth floor and has Samsung. So this is called as a direct hint. So I can easily place, just by seeing the sentence, I can place on the sixth floor B is there and he is using Samsung. So this is called as a direct hint. So I will directly place it out and then I will try to check any other hints. The one who has Vivo 
leaves on the top floor so this is also direct hint the one sorry the one who is having sony leaves on the top floor the one who is having sony leaves on the top floor means the top floor one is using sony sony and next what do we have the one who has vivo leaves below the one who has gioni means after gioni vivo should come if gioni is in the first uh, fifth position vivo can be any of this the one who is using vivo is leaving after gioni below gioni they did not say immediately if they say immediately means they should be next to each other but they just said below if it is fifth floor 4 3 2 1 or below itself if it is third floor 2 and 1 are below but if it is first floor nothing is below that means for gioni one is not possible because after below gioni vivo should also come so if gioni is in the first floor there is no one below him so definitely only 5 and 3 are possible for him so that's one hint we have after gioni vivo should come and gioni can take only 5 and third position now let's little read ahead the one who has a uh, apple leaves on the second floor i leaves above h so here we have some more hints let us place the one who is having apple leaves on the second floor so this is apple and i is going to leave above h but i cannot place it i know i is above h but i cannot place it anywhere anywhere it is possible a leaves immediately below the one who is using sony so already we know sony is on the ninth floor so a should be definitely upon the eighth floor a should be definitely upon the eighth floor so this is also known for us and next we have one more hints that is f leaves immediately above the floor from the one who has motorola f is going to leave immediately above the floor who has motorola so we cannot place it directly but yeah we can use it later on first we we will read out all the information that is given the one who leaves uh, who leaves on the odd floor has vivo so this is a good hint for us because we already know after gioni vivo should come and they clearly said gioni is also in the odd position and vivo should also be in the odd place that means gioni should definitely go with the fifth one and vivo should go with the third position if gioni is in the third position a uh, vivo first place might also be possible gioni is in the third position vivo first place is also possible it's a possibility we cannot say it is exactly correct but it's a possibility gioni can be in the uh, gioni can be in the fifth and vivo can be in the third or gioni can be third and vivo can be fifth, uh, first one so we will little move there are two floors between d and b so already we know where is b so there are two floors between d and b means definitely d after two floors d should come so d should come here it can be vivo or gioni we cannot place it exactly any of them can come we need to check few more hints if we have the number of persons who lies above east floor are same as the number of persons who lies below so above e floor is same as the number of persons who lies below that means definitely e should be in the fifth floor because here below four floors and above floor floors is only possible for e the middle the middle person should be e and then what else hints we have c lives on the even number of floor and has oppo c is going to live on even number of floor and has oppo so what are the even floors that are uh, left over for us it is only fourth position because eight is already occupied sixth is occupied second is also apple second is apple so c should be here and c is supposed to use oppo so this information sir as of now found okay and then what else is left over for us lenovo is living in the even floor we know after lenovo nokia should come this also we know and what is the even floor left it is only eighth because sixth is occupied fourth is occupied second apple is occupied so definitely a should be the one who is using lenovo and the seventh one should use nokia right nokia so this all are also formed now for the last position or maybe for this gioni and vivo position if you have a look here there is a hint that is uh f leaves immediately above the one who is using motorola f is leaving immediately above the one who is using motorola they said that so the one who is using motorola above that f should be there but suppose if i think gioni is in the third position so f should motorola should come here yes but above that there is no place 
only place left over is this only for motorel see here everything is occupied then only place left over should be this only if we walk and come here then jioni comes here then motorola cannot occupy the position right so definitely vivo should be there jioni should be there and motorola the left over one should be here and then f will come in this position before motorola f is there or before motorola f person should be there now these are the only hints that are left for us so if i see g leaves five floors uh, before the one who is using motorola g is going to leave five floors below uh, before b and motorola one there is five floors gap so motorola is already here so g should be here g should be here and then we know i is above h if you see i leaves above h i leaves above h so definitely i should be upon the ninth and h should be in the least because that are the only two places that are left so i should be upon the top and h should be in the bottom so that is the arrangement so if i read all the sentences i think i almost got uh, the options that can be fitted out okay and then the remaining we has used to shape it out so whenever you uh, you got a question from data arrangements you just needs to place them first 1 2 3 4 5 9 if you place it will be little easy for you to absorb and each and every hint is very very important whenever you are solving out each and every hint is very important now the questions that are asked upon it there are two questions so let's see who among the uh, following is having vivo so who is having vivo here vivo is d the one who is having vivo is d so what is the answer it is option b and the next question the one who has lenovo lives on which floor the one who is having lenovo lives on which floor lenovo is here which is eighth floor the one who is having lenovo lives on eighth floor eighth floor actually this particular question i has explained you the entire thing to make you understand how to do the arrangement but if you carefully observe we know lenovo lives only upon the even number of floor without even solving the arrangement i can say the particular answer for this question is definitely 8 if i have options like 2 6 then it might be little confusing but we know lenovo is going to leave upon the 8th floor so you can directly place it out because only the option that is having even is only 8 even without arranging you would have answered this question but yeah there are possibilities that they might ask you different questions we just had two questions here so if when they give you complex data arrangements so there are chances that they might even ask you two to three questions also sometimes even maybe more number of questions too so each and every hint is very important whenever you are arranging the data arrangements questions and trying to place out them is also very important in a class of 145 students 70 students like physics 80 like chemistry 90 like mathematics also 20 likes chemistry only 30 likes both chemistry and mathematics but not physics 15 like physics and mathematics but not chemistry it is also known that each of the 145 students likes at least one of the three subjects in another class all the students like biology this class is matched so first what we will do we will try to fix out the data of this particular class So there are only three elements here: physics, chemistry, and mathematics. And then one more, another biology is going to be added. When a class of new students added here, then biology is also going to be added. So first, we will try to identify the relation between these three. How many people like only physics, or how many people like physics, maths? The data we will try to figure out. So basically, this question we are going to solve by using the concept of Venn diagrams. So let's draw. Total one forty-five students: physics. chemistry and mathematics so physics will imagine in one circle and then chemistry then the mathematics so total three circles now 70 likes physics means entire people who likes physics is 70 the entire circle of physics is 70 and similarly chemistry it is 90 and for mathematics uh, for chemistry it is 80 and for mathematics it is 90 now 20 students like only chemistry what is the meaning of 20 students like 20 likes only chemistry means the part where only chemistry is there but suppose if you take this one chemistry and physics is mixed so not this one only chemistry means this part 20 students are there 80 is the overall entire circle is 80 but this part is 20 now 30 students like both chemistry and mathematics but not physics so it is not physics they don't like physics but they like chemistry and mathematics so you need to look the combination of chemistry and mathematics means here 
So these are the 30 students. And then 15 students like physics and mathematics, but not chemistry. So 15 should be only for physics and mathematics, not for chemistry. Now, it is known that all 145 students likes at least one of these three subjects. Means there is no student who does not like anything. So every, if I do entire physics, chemistry and mathematics, all the students, maybe one or two subjects they like or three subjects they like, entire should be 145. That is what they said. Now, firstly, we will try to identify this unknown one values. How many like only physics or how many like all the three or how many like physics and chemistry. This unknown values we'll try to figure out by using this data itself. And then we can match the other session, other class that is going to be matched here for only biology, we can match it. So first we try to fix only this values first of all. So if I for suppose imagine the people uh, who like all the three mathematics chemistry and physics is x then if you actually look at this particular chemistry circle we don't know how many people are there liking between physics and chemistry that's a question mark if i look at this chemistry circle if i add the question mark x plus 30 plus 20 it should be equal to 80 because entire chemistry is 80 means if i add all of these four parts whichever comes in the circle that should be 80 that means i can say the question mark value is nothing but 30 minus x. So this is 30 minus x. Now look at physics. Uh, here we don't know how much, but if I add all of this code, that should be 70. So the question mark plus 15 plus x plus 30 minus x should be equal to 70. So x and x will got cancelled here. It will uh, it will get cancelled over here, the value of x. So the question mark will be equal to 70 and this 45 will move that side. 15 plus 30 is 45. So 70 minus 45, which is 25. So this question mark is 25. I found out this value. Similarly, I look at for mathematics. So if I add all of this, 15, x, 30, and this question mark, it should be 90. So 15 plus x plus 30 plus question mark should be equal to 90. So I can say the question mark value will be equal to uh, 90, 45 will move its side. 90 minus 45. Uh, 90 minus 45, 45 minus x. So that's 45 minus x. Now, now we wrote everything in the form of x, but we should definitely know the value of x. Then only I'll be able to find out the exact number of people. So what I will do, I have one more information that is entire there are 145 students. That means if I add all of them, it should be 145. Means if I do 25 plus 30 minus X plus 20 plus 15 plus X plus 30 plus 45 minus X, it should be equal to 145. Everything that I add here, everything if I add. So X and X will get canceled over here. So how much will get 25 plus 30, 55, 55 plus 20, 75, 75 plus 15, 90, 90 plus 30, 120 plus, uh, plus 45, 165. So 165 minus x is equal to 145. So value of x is equal to 20. So we got the common value of x is 20. If value of x is 20, then this will be 30 minus x means 10. So this is going to be 10. And this is 40 minus x, 45 minus x, 45 minus x. So it is going to be, I'll uh, redraw it. It is going, yeah, this is going to be 20. This is 10. And this is 45 minus 20, which 25. So these are the students. The entire, we got the value of x and we are just placing out the value of x there. That's it. We just placed out the value of x. So if I just look into that class, entire people, physics, if I take, chemistry, if I take, or mathematics, if I take, all the three, it is 20. Physics and mathematics, it is 15. Physics and chemistry it is 30, only mathematics 25 and total math 90, chemistry only 80 and physics only 70 and here it is 20, 10 and 25. Entire physics it is 70, only physics 25. Similarly, entire chemistry 80, only chemistry 20. We got all of these values first. Next, next what happened for this particular class, the the another class, there are students who likes only biology. So the particular another class students likes only biology. They clearly specified the another class students likes only biology, only biology. So how many other students are there? They are going to like only biology. So this class is matched with the previous class to make a new class. 
as a result the combined strength of new class is 180 so entire new class is 180 that means how many people added already 145 people are there now it become 180 means i can say the 35 people are added so all of this 35 people like only biology they like only biology so there is a separate circle they are not going to intersect with chemistry maths or physics they like biology only clearly this perspective only biology now it is found that the new class some of the students from the previous class like chemistry or mathematics but not physics started liking biology so the ones who likes only chemistry or mathematics or chemistry and mathematics they started liking biology means only this group of people who likes chemistry or chemistry and mathematics or mathematics means it should be a combination of chemistry and mathematics itself so they started liking biology means some of these people for suppose 20 people are there in that some shifted to biology means they started liking biology also chemistry is there but still for suppose 20 people are there in that five people started liking biology also means 15 will be only for chemistry and this five will be for chemistry and biology right so they started even liking biology along with chemistry they will start even liking biology like that some of the people from math and chemistry not from physics so physics are not going to meet they started liking biology as a result the ratio they gave us so when if i want to join biology here i know already 35 people like only biology but if i want to make biology intersect it should intersect only with chemistry and maths and only biology already 35 are there some of them has shifted here okay some of those people has shifted here okay now what they said as a result the number of students who likes chemistry mathematics and biology to the number of students who likes mathematics and biology to the number of students who likes chemistry and biology becomes 1 is to 3 is to 4 so for suppose if i imagine the students who like all the three if you see here this said the students who likes chemistry and mathematics biology means all the three this is x for suppose if i think now the number of students who likes mathematics and biology so actually it is supposed to be 1 is to 3 is to 4 right means it is x 3x and 4x now what are the students who likes mathematics and biology that did not specify only mathematics and biology they said mathematics and biology in which parts mathematics and biology is meeting out here it is meeting out and here also it is meeting out this both here the value of x is meeting out and even the little extension part this is also meeting out this both together is 3x this both together is 3x this is for chemistry maths and biology this is for maths and biology means this both here maths and biology is meeting here also maths and biology is meeting so that both is 3x this both is 3x if this specify only maths and biology then chemistry should not come at all only maths and biology you should say but this said maths and biology so if this is x this is supposed to be 2x then if this entire part is 3x we already know this is x so this is supposed to be 2x this is supposed to be 2x then okay that's first thing and similarly if you look at this one also the people who likes chemistry and biology means this part should be 4x entire should be 4x entire that means i can say this part should be 3x this part should be 3x now now also there is not 30 25 20 anymore those are not going to be 25 30 or 20 uh, 20 anymore why because firstly there are some people who likes only chemistry or only maths or chemistry and maths now some of them is going to shift here for suppose let us take this as example 20 people are there this is only for chemistry before but now right now some of the people are going to like biology also for suppose 20 10 people like biology now so this 10 people will be the combination here so this is going to be 20 minus 3x the combination here is 3x see here if 10 people like biology and chemistry 10 people left over 20 minus 10 or for suppose if 5 people like only chemistry and remaining 15 shifted here so this is 20 minus 15 is 5 and similarly here also before only chem chemistry and mathematics it is 30 right now chemistry mathematics biology is 30 30 and x people shifted there so this is going to become 30 minus x in this entire 30 this part is x this part should be 30 minus x 
30 minus x. And similarly, this also. Before this entire was 25, but now 2x is added. So this should be 2x minus 25 minus 2x. So this is how the values will be. And we don't know what is the value of x. If they gave us the value of x, then it would be easy for us to figure out. Now what they're asking, in the new class, what should be the maximum number of students who likes biology? So they're asking, what is the maximum number of students who likes biology in the new class? New class. So I need to identify biology circle entire. Means I should figure out the value of 3x, uh, 3x plus x plus 2x plus 35 means 35 plus 2x plus x plus 3x. This entire thing I should find out. Yes, that means I need to figure out 6x plus 35 value. But I should know what is x. Now look at your question. They are asking maximum number. Maximum number means, means for suppose I need to find out x. Firstly, maximum possibility I need to find out. So if I find, take any value of x, remaining should not be in terms of negative. I cannot take x as 60 or something because for suppose if I take x as 60, 30 minus 60 is minus 30. There cannot be negative people. So if I take whatever the value I take for x, 20 minus 3x or 30 minus x or 25 minus 2x should not become negative. The number of people who likes only maths or people who like maths and chemistry or this should not become negative for sure. Yes. So that means what is the possibility here only X is more. So it should not be less than zero. This value should not be less than zero. This can be equal to zero, but cannot be less than zero. This shouldn't be uh, this particular value cannot be less than zero. This should be greater than or equal to zero. That means 3x will be greater than or equal to 20 value of x maximum it can take a 6. 20 divided by 3 is 6 point means 6 it can take. Number of students cannot be decimal so 6 is the only possibility. Even if you take here 30 minus x is greater than or equal to 0 means x can take 30. But if x take 30 this might become negative. So if you substitute here this will become negative. So for 3x I directly checked. So this should be greater than or equal to zero. This can be zero also. The people who like chemistry can become zero also. But it cannot be negative. So the maximum value x can take is three only. 20, uh, 20 minus 3x should be greater than or equal to zero. So 3x is greater than or equal to 20 means value of x is greater than or equal to six. So it can even take six. Okay. So first, if I take it as six. Okay, so if I take it as 6, the value of x as 6, that is the only possibility for us, the maximum that we can take x as 6. If I take x as 6, then this becomes 0. Yes, then everything got satisfied. So x is the maximum possibility for x as 6. So if I substitute x as 6, then it will be 6 into 6 plus 35. Means 36 plus 35. 36 plus 35 is how much? It's 71. So what is the maximum number of students uh, that can take biology is 71. Where this becomes 0. That is the only thing that you can take. Yeah. Means this is not actually going to be equal to 0. For suppose if I take 20 minus 3 into 6, that is 2. The minimum it can take is 2. For suppose if I take 7 and all, what happens? Oh, sorry, x value should be less than or equal to 6. Right. If I take 7 and all, what happens? It will become 21. 20 minus 21 means negative. Means only 6 is possible. You can even take 5 also. But the maximum number of students we are finding out. So maximum value x can take a 6 only. That's why I'm substituting at 6. So 71 is the maximum number of students that is possible. Either you can make it 0, but 0 is not exactly happening out here. It can minimum go to 2. And this all will also be not in terms of negative. So what is the maximum number of students who likes biology? It is 71. Option B. A Venn diagram question where there are so many mixture of things. So hope you understood. Find the number at the place of question mark. We need to identify the number at the place of question mark. So if you see here, they gave us three expressions and here is a question mark. We need to identify that particular number. So it's a question which is depending upon operation changes. Means they are going to change or interchange of operations, we can say. The mathematics operations that we are going to perform. See here, equal to is that $74.00. 132 G12 
U42 is equals to 43. So actually what is happening, this dollar G or U are going to represent mathematics operations, maybe plus or multiplication or division or subtraction. They are going to represent in a different manner. Maybe dollar means plus or G means into or U means division, something like that. So they are going to give us in this manner. They are not going to say us what is going to stand for what. And if I substitute it, it should be equal to 43. And similar manner, if I if I for suppose take dollar as plus here and it satisfy for 43, if I even check in the second one, it should satisfy. Then only I can apply in the third one, right? So first, let us check what are the possibilities that we had for the particular dollar or for G or for U. What are possibilities we had? We will try to check out. So what are the possibilities that might be there? Look at this. A dollar, dollar G U, right, is equals to 43. Now, for suppose, uh, if I have a careful look at this expression, 132 is a huge number. Yes, I should definitely little reduce it. So, and 132 is exactly divisible by 12. And whenever I'm using the operations like either plus division or multiplication or subtraction, I should definitely follow Bodmer's rule itself. Yes, however, brackets are not there here. So I should first do priority for division, then multiplication, addition, and subtraction. Yes, I need to go with first division. If I carefully observe, 135 and 12 are uh, 132, sorry, 132 is divisible by 12. Yes, so I can think G might be division. I'm just trying to reduce it a little. 43, uh, 43 I should get. 135 is a huge number. So maybe it's a possibility. We're just checking it's a possibility. So 74 will be left. First, if I perform division here, then 132, if it is divided by 12, that is going to give us 11. 74, 11. So this part is 11 and then 42, U142. So dollar is here and U is here. Now, for suppose, uh, I need to get 43. So how will we get? For suppose, if I add this and subtract from this, maybe 11 plus 42. If I do 11 plus 42 is how much? If, if U is plus, 11 plus 42 is 53. Uh, from 74, if I subtract 53, 74 minus 53 is 21. No, it is supposed to be 43. So U is not plus. And definitely there won't be multiplication also for you if I check U as plus. Already division I gave for G. So I checked U as plus. That doesn't satisfy U as plus and dollar as minus. Definitely it won't be multiplication because if I multiply these numbers, it will be so huge. And already division is done, so I cannot take division. So U as plus doesn't satisfy. Let us imagine U is minus and dollar is plus. Let us check. So 74 plus 11 minus 42 should be equal to 43. Let us check. So 74 plus 11 is how much? 85 minus 42. Is 85 minus 42, 43? Yes, exactly satisfied. So as per the first expression, G should be division, U should be minus, and dollar should be plus. But I cannot say exactly those are correct. I just need to check in the second expression once. That means 224 divided by 14 minus 15 plus 50 should give me 51. Let us check. So 224 divided by 14 is 16. So this is 16 minus 15 plus 50 is equals to 51. So 16 plus 50, both are additions. I'm doing it out. 66 minus 15 is equals to 51. 66 minus 15, 51. Yes, correct. Satisfied. So we got the operations. G means division, U means minus, and dollar means plus. So these are the operations they has performed. So we decoded them. The expressions, we are going to use Bodmos rule itself. You just cannot do multiplication first and then addition or maybe subtraction. So you cannot do that. It should be definitely as per the Bodmos rule itself. Okay, so first division, then multiplication, addition, and subtraction. Now I'll apply for the last one. It should be 14 plus 1, uh, 391 divided by uh, some number. We don't know what was that number. Plus 80 should be equal to 71. So what should I do? First, I should perform this one. Uh, it's not plus. U is minus. So here it is minus and this is plus. So first, I should perform this one in general. 
and then uh, we need to take this one. So this expression, let us imagine this value uh, is some y. So 14 minus y plus 80 should be equal to 71. So this addition, if I do, 14 plus 80 is how much? 94. 94 minus y is equals to 71. So what will be the value of y? It is 94 minus 71, which is 23. That means here, 30, uh, 391 divided by x, if I do, it should be 23. It should be 23. If I do 391 divided by x, if the resultant is 23, if the resultant is 23 here, then 14 plus 18, uh, plus 18, 94 minus 23 will give me 71. It will satisfy. So this should be 23. So what is the value of x? x will be equals to 391 divided by 23. 391 divided by 23 means it is 17. So what is the value of question mark? It is 17. Option A. So first you should apply the BODMAS rule, identify uh, the symbol and their operation meanings. Here G is division, U is subtraction and dollar is plus. And then we check out in the second expression, we confirm it, then we find out the value of the question mark. Thank you for watching the video. These are some of the sample questions that might appear in the advanced reasoning section of TCS. I hope you understood. Thank you.